In this video, I will show you how I made my blue apron dress. The dress has slits down either side and straps that can be closed with brooches. It's made from herringbone woven wool. It's fairly unfitted, which makes it very easy to make. But if you want to give it more shape, adding a belt at the waist does wonders. Like the underdress, you have to draft your own pattern. But this one is even easier to make than the shift, so don't worry. Um, I'm just going to take you through it. You are going to need two measurements this time. Um, the measurement around your torso at the widest point, which is the bust for most women. This measurement you are going to divide by two. And it's going to be the width of your rectangular front and back panels. Then you are going to take the measurement from where you want your dress to start to where you want it to end. And this measurement is going to become the length of your rectangular front and back pieces. So the front and back pieces are um, exactly the same. Um, so you're going to cut two of these um, rectangles and then place them on top of each other and of course add seam allowance. Add them, on, put them on, on top of each other and then stitch down the side seams. You can add go days if you want, then it's the same process as with the underdress. Um, but I didn't want um, go days, I wanted it to be sort of split down the side. Um, so yeah, you only have to seam to stitch down the side seams. Um, and then the main body of the dress is actually done. Um, that will leave you with this kind of like half tube thingy. That sort of opens like that. Um, and if you think that that is deceptively simple, then you are right. Because there's still all of the finishing to do, of course, and then the straps which will attach up here. And they take a bit of explaining to do as well, so I'll take you through it over here. Um, the way I made my straps was by cutting um, strips of fabric that were twice as long and twice as wide as I wanted the... Oh, focus. So yeah, uh, straps twice as long as and twice as wide as I wanted the final strap to be. And then you're going to fold it like you would fold um, bias binding. Um, so that is folding the outer edges in towards the middle, so a cross section kind of would, uh, would look like this. So this is kind of what you're left with. Um, and then you're going to fold that over again, so it's going to end up looking like that from the side. Um, and all of this you're just going to press with the iron. Um, and then you're going to stitch up along this long, long, um, you know, seam. Um, and then you're going to fold it so that, like, fold it down on itself so that it lies next to, its, to itself. Um, these two, almost like tubes of ribbon. So they are lying next to each other. And then you're going to seam them together again for a wider and stronger strap. And this loop that you're going to create is very important because this is where you're going to attach your brooches. So this part needs to be really strong, um, which is why you are going to need, to need it to be this kind of loop because it will be way stronger than, say, having a seam to carry the weight of your entire dress. So yeah, that's on the technical details um, that I thought I'd mention here on paper. And now I'll show you how I did it um, on video. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. I began by making a mock-up where I figured out exactly how long I wanted my straps to be, keeping in mind the size of potential brooches for the day where I can afford such a luxury. For now, I keep the straps tied close with some unassuming string. 
Also, while I made my mock-up, I realized I didn't have enough fabric for a full skirt and that I would rather keep the dress with open sides than have a gaunt dress with limited range of motion. Then I went to cut out the real fabric. I used the vertical lines in the herringbone pattern to make sure I cut straight and later I used them as guidelines for my stitches. I then stitched the side seams closed and the majority of the structural work was done. I just needed to finish the hems and add the straps. For the straps, I cut 4cm wide strips of fabric and folded them together like you would fold bias binding. So I made the sides meet in the center of the strip and folded it along the center so it became a fourth of its original width and four times as thick. I ironed and pinned them like so, but the pins were awkward in the very heavy and thick wool, so I found these mini clothespins and used them instead. I used whip stitches on the way up and made four straps in total. Two short ones for the front and two long ones for the back. Then I took each narrow strip and folded it so the herring bones matched up. There are a few ways to form the straps, but only one way gave me the result I wanted. First of all, I was going to need the looped end to be the end where I attached the brooches, because it's the strongest part. Secondly, I would like the herring bones to create chevrons running towards the loops. This was achieved by basically folding the straps over on themselves and pushing them to lie flat side by side, rather than bending them around to be next to each other as this just made slanted lines. It's hard to explain but hopefully the video makes it clear. I used pins to keep the straps together for the first few stitches but after that I found them to be more in the way than helpful. I kept stitching in almost a kind of spiral, which resulted in the strap itself also spiraling a bit. A good press with the iron took care of that. And now, as you might have noticed, I had to unpick one of the straps completely and sew it again because the chevrons pointed the wrong way. Oh well. Once the straps were done, I finished the edges of the skirt. Instead of felling the raw edges as I did on my underdress, I pressed the edges away from the stitches and tacked them down with whip stitches. This wool is so tightly woven I didn't feel the need to completely cover and shield the raw edges. It really doesn't want to fray and rolling the edges would be weird given the construction of the dress and add more bulk than I wanted. I did roll the bottom hems just to be safe and to add some weight to keep the dress hanging smoothly. I then experimented with finding the best way to attach the straps. I thought about concealing the ends in the upper hem of the dress, but after jamming a needle through literally 10 layers of fabric and up under my fingernail, I decided it was too bulky. So instead I rolled the top hem and finished it, and then I attached the straps with whip stitches. Once the straps were on, I was done. I just had to tie my non brooches and accessorize. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching.